The following is a presentation of the Belly Up Sports Media Network. and welcome into another episode of Rising to the Occasion. We're very happy to have you here because we've got a lot to touch on when it comes to NFL free agency. We are kicking out all kinds of content this week, and it's because we need to keep up with all of the news going on right now. You've got news. We, we still have sports that we want to touch on, like the NHL and then hockey is in general. We've got the NBA closing up their season and getting closer to who is going to get into the playoffs. Here coming up very soon, and we'll probably have to record this one tomorrow, we're going to have to talk about the NCAA tournaments going on because we're get, we're into March. March Madness is really here. Uh, we're just getting into the conference championships, so we're going to have to talk about that. So stay tuned. That will be our next episode. But right now we're going to have to talk about the NFL free agency, and we had to split this away from the UFC because, first of all, I knew that Blake and I would have plenty to talk about on the UFC. So if you watched that, you saw that. Uh, if you didn't watch it, go back and watch it because UFC 299 was so much fun. But we're going to get into the NFL free agency a ton to talk about here, and it just keeps on going on. So by the time that you see this, some of this information may be outdated. Uh, some of this information may be false. Uh, who knows? Uh, it's nebulous, as Michael Scott would say. So it's it's crazy. Uh, it is going just berserk in the NFL world right now, so we want to get into it. But before we do, first have to mention our friends over at Big Frig. As always, I've got my amazing handy-dandy uh, Big Frig Tumblr here. They were amazing and put our logos on them for us. They are an amazing Tumblr. I bring it to work with me all the time, and I'm a blue-collar guy, so it's out in the field with me. It's rugged. It, it does the job, uh, and it keeps my drinks cold right now because it's a little warmer outside. We just played some golf, and so... Uh, yeah, it was definitely warm outside, so I had to get some cold water, put it in there. It keeps my drink cold whenever I need it cold, keeps it hot whenever I need it to kept, be kept hot. Uh, not only that, but they specialize in their coolers. Their coolers are absolutely amazing. If you're watching on YouTube, you see the little overlay of the Badlands camo uh, cooler down there. Just an amazing product, guys. Big Frig is the best product on the market. You do not want to miss out on these coolers and tumblers. Uh, so if you're in the market for a new one, maybe you know somebody who... Is it, you, you have a birthday gift to get. Easter's coming up. Maybe you want to get an Easter gift and get them an awesome cooler to take with them for, to go camping or whatever the case may be. Go to BigFrig.com. Do not miss out on this amazing product. And we've partnered with them to give you an amazing deal. Go to BigFrig.com. That's B-I-G-F-R-I-G.com and use the code RISING220 for 20% off. That's BigFrig.com with the code R-I-S-I-N-G-T-O-2-0. For 20% off your next purchase, go check them out. Big Frig is an amazing product. We love them here at Rising to the Occasion, and we have loved our partnership with them. Um, but for now, we are going to get into the episode. Uh, got to first mention and, and bring in my co host. We got Jeremy. Jeremy, how are we doing? Doing pretty good. And felt good to get back out on the course. Obviously, we're not used to being on the course this early, and it's only the. Uh, I don't even know what day it is. It's, it's the 12th it's of March. Er, early in March. Yeah, mid, it's mid early in March, March so, dude. Yeah. We're still used to maybe being like mid-40s, maybe lucky to get 50. But it's 72 degrees outside, and we just got to do nine holes of golf, and it felt really good to swing the sticks again. But um, it's good to knock the rust off. But going back to the main topic, obviously, like Josh has said, NFL free agency has just been completely unbelievable for some positives, some negatives, some of the questionable ones that you guys have seen. But – um, there's going to be obviously so much to talk about, but the one thing that kind of hurt my heart is seeing Joe Mixon parting ways with Cincinnati. But um, that's besides the point. Joe Mixon was an amazing aspect for Cincinnati's running core. But 
it is what it is, and now the tables are turned. But, Josh, I know we have a whole bunch to talk about here for NFL free agency. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a ton on there, and I know, like I said, there's going to be more information by the time you guys are watching this. And so, and some of this information, we may not have all of the information now. There's some of more. We just haven't been told all of the details yet. Yeah. But uh, And it's it's crazy how every day – Something for the new. last for the last two days, my phone has been blowing up with mm-hmm. NFL free agency news. Same. It has been absolutely crazy. I mean, starting off, we'll we'll get to Joe Mixon here in just a second and talk about him. But another one that I didn't even put in our notes: T. Higgins requesting a trade after being franchise tagged. Yeah. Uh, and so that was a crazy one. I hate to see him leave Cincinnati. I think he's a perfect fit there. Yeah. Uh, and so that was another big one. But they did sign Orlando Brown, kept one of their bodyguards up mm-hmm. front. So that was definitely some good news yeah. coming from Cincinnati. Um, but Let's start off. We would be doing our audience injustice if I didn't start off by mentioning my guy, Baker Mayfield. Baker Mm -hmm. Mayfield has now signed his contract officially with the Buccaneers. Amazing news. We've been talking about Baker since he had this great year this last year. He just seems like he's in the right place down in Tampa. Uh, So they were able to keep uh, keep Baker. They signed Mike Evans as well, and so they're, they're still making some adjustments. I haven't seen any big moves down there to really make you think that they're going to bring something new to the table this year, but they're keeping Baker. Baker was signed. He agree, agreed to a three-year contract up to up to worth uh, the worth up to 115 total, uh, a million. So $115 million for Baker and a three-year contract. Um, and a, a crazy good deal. Um, that's just the way the market's going right now, and, and it's, it's crazy to see the market and everything that's going on with all of the moves, but Baker stays in Tampa. How do you like that move? I, or I guess I, the no move. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I, th- I knew something was probably going to happen between Baker Mayfield. You think of what he's done just in his time in the NFL alone. I know he hasn't been in the league for a long time, but you look at what Baker Mayfield has done. He's bounced around a little bit. I mean, the one season that particularly sticks out to me was when he went to um, he went to the Rams. And then Louis just in, the, in the flip of a switch had to learn the entire playbook and then just threw him into the reins. Then what do we see Baker Mayfield do? Shine. And we've seen Baker Mayfield shine in a lot of circumstances, whether it's back in Oklahoma and for college or even now obviously in the NFL. But I think this is a really good aspect for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, especially with like you mentioned with re signing Mike Evans back. I think those two, they can really connect and click and make some big plays coming in this upcoming season. But looking at for what Tampa Bay has to endure, I know looking at their defense, there hasn't been a whole bunch of like drop-offs or anything, so that's a good benefit for Tampa Bay's defense. Just I think they need to add definitely something to their offense outside of like Mike Evans. Then even like I know we've obviously talked about like Chris Godwin for a long time, but I I think they need to add something just because I'm so used to obviously like we said Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, even Scotty Miller for being in Tampa Bay. If they if they add someone to the offense, I think it has to be in the running back position, trying to upgrade that running back position. I think that's the best move for them on offense. But Mm -hmm. you also saw Tampa Bay team that as long as you don't lose big pieces I I think they're sitting in a pretty good place because Tampa Bay looked good last year especially once they figured things out because throughout the entire season it just felt like they were figuring things out they they hadn't figured it out until right there at the end and they figured it out Uh, they had a couple of great games a great game against Philadelphia Mm -hmm. a a very good game against the Lions just couldn't come through against a very tough Lions team too Hey, sometimes the pieces of the puzzle, they, they may take a little longer than you expect, but, I mean, you can only do what you can do. Yeah, so I'm, I'm very happy for Baker. Uh, like I said, once they signed that deal, I was going to be going online and buying a new Baker jersey. So maybe yeah. I'll have a new Baker jersey. It's in the process. Either mm-hmm. wearing it or uh, uh, putting it up on the wall somewhere here in the studio. Oh, I know you'll wear it a couple times. Then Probably a couple times at least, yeah. for sure. But Just don't get a stain on it. Going over to the Kansas City Chiefs, uh, a lot of question marks as of what they might be able to do. We know that they made – uh, a trade getting rid of, uh, was it Kadarius Tony? Kadarius Tony. Tony. Yeah, they, yep. they got rid of Kadarius Tony over to the Jets, if I remember correctly. Uh, and so that was some big news with them. But now we see that the Chiefs and the five time all pro defensive tackle, Chris Jones, they reached an agreement. Uh, this is old news for now, but uh, still, they, they reached an agreement. Five year deal that includes $95 million guaranteed. Uh, I forget what his contract was exactly, but uh, I do know that, that $95 million guaranteed. So, 
that's that is the definition of securing a bag a defensive lineman getting this kind of a contract chris jones is worth it too whenever we talked about him hitting the free free agency what could happen with him is there any teams that could draw him away from kansas city that's going to be a very tough task because we know the kind of relationship that that entire team has together so it's going to be really hard to draw somebody away from them but we look at at what they've got coming back now with chris jones coming back for a five-year deal this is looking very scary over there on the defensive front to be able to keep him. It's one thing to not have Chris Jones on the field and their defense front still be scary, but having Chris Jones on the field in the Kansas City uniform is even more scary than what it already was. I mean, we knew, at least I thought, you probably did the same thing, we knew Kansas City was probably going to do whatever it took to get Chris Jones back in their roster. I mean, Chris Jones has just led the defense for that Kansas City defense. It doesn't matter whether you're – you have two people on him or even three people on him lined up. He's still going to find a way to get through that offensive line, and he's just going to do whatever he can to get to that quarterback. And we've seen Chris Jones throughout almost every NFL season just do Chris Jones typical things. He's he's not afraid to run. We've seen Chris Jones run around the field. Then, like I said, just completely pancaking offensive linemen. Then it's nothing new for the Kansas City defense, but it's definitely a thing that obviously every Kansas City fan is loving to see that Chris Jones is going to be staying in the in the red and white. I mean, I'd like to see him in the black and orange, but I mean, we all knew that was never going to probably happen. But Josh, I mean, Chris Jones and outside of Outside of losing one of their big key pieces to their defense, do you think they're going to have any um, have any problems, or do you think they're going to see the typical Kansas City defense? I feel like you're just going to see the same as long as they don't they don't lose something really big. Yeah. I think you're going to see the same team. They yeah. haven't really lost too much, and no. I guarantee they're going to try to add something in that wide receiver core, get Definitely. that offense rolling again. They're going to have to figure something out on offense because their offense just was that was the problem last yeah. year. That's was, what that's what held them back. It was and rough. So, uh, I do think that their defense will be just fine. I think they're going to find a way to to keep on thriving. But uh, you just add a couple of couple of new pieces back there and, mm-hmm. and help your help your your guys out here and there wherever you can make adjustments. I think the offensive side of the ball is where they have to focus on the most. Definitely. But keeping him, uh, keeping Chris Jones, that's that's just huge for your defense because oh, he's a guy that gets in the backfield and disrupts a, a run or a pass. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. He just broke the all-time uh, se- single-season record for sacks in a single season. That one surprised so me. So just crazy guy. He is, he is an, an, an amazing piece to that defense. He is the that heart defense. of that defense. Yeah. Usually it's a linebacker that stands out, and that's the guy you, that you can't afford to lose. Mm-hmm. Chris Jones is that linebacker that is just the standout. He is the star of that defense. And as long as he's in Kansas City, I think their defense is going to be just fine. Mm-hmm. And I do think that their offense finds a way to get rolling again. They're going to be a dangerous team. They're going to they're a team a team to look out for. But there are some other teams that have added some pieces that look really good, and another team that added some pieces, at least one piece. This is one of those, like you said, Jeremy, maybe a little questionable. You're questioning why they would have added this piece. The Jaguars go up and pick Mac Jones, so that Mac Jones is traded to the Jaguars. Patriots received just a sixth round pick. That's it, just a sixth round pick for Mac Jones. I know there was a lot of question marks in New England about whether Mac Jones was actually the guy or not. He would show up for one game and he just wouldn't the next. I understand the question marks. I I, I understand where you look at him and you're just you just think we got to move on. But you couldn't have done any better than just a single sixth round pick. I I feel like that was a low ball move. Uh, the Patriots I feel like lost this overall, but now it opens up. Who's, who's going to be their next quarterback? But, I mean, not only that, but why why do the Jaguars need to get – or, uh, you know, yeah, why do the Jaguars need Mac Jones? I mean, I guess you've got a good backup yeah. to Trevor Lawrence, or are they trying to sh- tell Trevor Lawrence, hey, if you keep on throwing too many picks, you're out and we're putting him in? That's kind of what I was thinking. Like, if you, if you get on that downhill slump, we're going to put Mac Jones in. But before trying to process and analyze and think for all these moves that they're doing, like – you said it the best. They have Trevor Lawrence. Why are they adding another quarterback like Mac Jones? Don't get me wrong. Mac Jones, he's he's not the greatest quarterback. He's no like he's no Patrick Mahomes, he's no Joe Burrow, or he's nothing too crazy out of the box. But like you still talk about Mac Jones and for what he's done. From the very few times you've seen the Patriots play on primetime and just even in the regular season in general. 
to me, Mac Jones just – he just looks like he's out there just going through the motions. Like, I don't necessarily know why the Jaguars just – added him or even for the Patriots just to receive just a six round pick. To me that's kinda it's kind of stupid. I, I felt like the Patriots lost in yeah, this trade. That's what I'm saying. Like they but didn't get the good I, I, I do agree. Day. I don't think Mac Jones is like a franchise QB, but I also I look at the team he was on and I don't see a whole lot of pieces that go around your quarterback to yeah. help him out. Yeah. So that's that's the thing that kind of gets me questioning is what did you do to to give Mac Jones a chance? And yeah. I didn't see much. You had Ramondre Stevenson. I, I know you had Jacoby out there, but Ezekiel Elliott, you know that's I, about it. <laughs> yeah, Ezekiel Elliott. I mean, who didn't do anything? Nope. I, I just I don't know what pieces were around him. So what were you what were you doing to try to help him Boost succeed? Up the process. I mean, and I do know that the Patriots right now are in, in talks of trying to get Calvin Ridley. So if you would have been able to keep Mac Jones and get Calvin Ridley, or maybe get another there. star star uh, wide receiver to add to your roster. There's many other options that could have made that team better than to get rid of a guy that at least has some experience. Yeah. Now I don't, I mean, I, I don't know where you're where you're going to go. Maybe they're pursuing for Justin Fields. Uh, they do have a high draft pick, so maybe they go with what I'm hearing is maybe a, a Jaden Daniels, which I think is just overrated for the yeah. NFL. Uh, he, I don't, I don't see it in Jaden Daniels. He's much like what I thought of Anthony Richardson, who did prove me wrong. So I will say that. He, he reminds me of that style of quarterback. Not the same guy at all. I'm not trying to compare the two. But that's 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 the level that I'm thinking of with Jaden Daniels. I think he's obviously a much, much better college football player than than uh, Anthony Richardson was. But yeah. I just I, I don't know where the Patriots are, Patriots are going to go uh, personally <laughs> with that. I think they're number three or four pick for the Patriots. I'm going after Michael Penix. Oh yeah, I, I'm going after you'd be Michael stupid Penix. Not to go after Penix. That's that's the dude that I want. Yeah. Um, You've watched what he's done all year. I mean, you'd be stupid not to go for Penix. Who knows? Maybe even Bo Nix. Uh, those are two phenomenal, yeah. phenomenal guys coming out as rookies. I think Michael Penix is more mature. He's yeah. He's been in college for a long time. I guess so. So is Bo Nix. So I, either one of those either guys. One of them could be a good pick. I I'm not as high as high on Drake, Drake May anymore. Caleb Caleb Williams is absolutely going to get snatched up uh, snatched up by either the Bears or the the Commanders. One of the two. So and and so I, I think Drake May is probably going to be the next the next QB to mm -hmm. go. So we'll we'll see. I'm I'm just curious of what moves the Patriots are going to do. Are they going to make the right moves to get back there. I just didn't think that this was a good move to pick up a sixth round pick yeah. and lose a guy that can at least help your locker room, help your Something. your QB room. Something. But moving on, we've got a Pro Bowl quarterback, nine time Pro Bowl quarterback, who is now moving to a new team one more time. We've got Russell Wilson planning to sign with the Steelers. Uh, and it, it's once this new leagues or the new league year begins on March 13th, which will be when this episode drops uh, on Wednesday, that deal will cost the Pittsburgh. It's an estimated of $1.2 million uh, in 2024. So we'll see what kind of contract they draw up for Russell Wilson. I'm, I'm not exactly sure when I read everything on this contract and what it could be. I'm not sure. And it's all speculation that he's going there because he's officially not released until March 13th, which is on Wednesday when this, when this drops. So, We'll see. Uh, so by the time you're watching this, there may be, be new news out there that Russell Wilson goes to the Patriots for all we know. But, uh, I mean, Russell Wilson, it's it's not that he's a bad quarterback because we've seen what he's capable of. But looking at Russell Wilson, we saw what he did the last couple of years there in, Bron uh, in Bronco country and trying to get that franchise together as their main QB. We saw a lot of drama going into him wanting an office and all this stuff, and he's just starting to act like a robot. Uh, maybe he's just not thinking about the game. There's a lot of speculation of what's going on with Russell Wilson. Uh, regardless, we know that what he's capable of being, maybe maybe Denver just wasn't the right location for him. Uh, how do you think he would fit if he does end up signing this deal with the Steelers? I mean, I'm not looking forward to it just because it's another – Good quarterback that we have to deal with for <laughs> yeah. the Cincinnati Bengals. Yeah, the AFC North. Yeah, the I mean, AFC is becoming pretty hard now. <laughs> but, like, I I think it could be a decent move for the Pittsburgh Steelers and adding Russell Wilson. Like, I don't know if it was just the altitude problem for Russell Wilson dealing with Denver. And let's ride. But, um, I mean, Russell Wilson, we've seen him time in and time out. 
he's either great or he's either mediocre. Now, Russell Wilson, he had decent weapons in Denver. He had Sutton. He had, oh, God, there's there's the other wide receiver number. Um, uh, they um, had Judy at yeah, one point, right? Yeah. And then they, they also Judy had Marvin Mims, Marvin Mims as a, as a good, yep. f- great like, freshman coming in. It's not like he didn't have weapons in Denver. But, I mean, Russell Wilson, it's hit and miss. It's like a light bulb you just buy out of the package, and you're lucky if it works. But Russell Wilson, he could definitely be – a good aspect in Pittsburgh. I think he could definitely help their game, but there's also a lot of things that you got to deal with, especially going into the AFC. But this is definitely it's it's not that big of a, a culture shock for Russell Wilson. Obviously, being in the league for so long, he's used to making these adjustments. But I think that it's he, he's going to at least do, he's going to be decent. I think he'll be above 500. Mm-hmm. But for the overall aspect. I think, in my opinion, Russell Wilson's too hyped. He's too talked about, in my opinion. But, I mean, there's so much that you can mention about Russell Wilson because you can talk one or the other. You can talk about how fantastic he is or you can talk about how crap he is. But for the Pittsburgh benefit, it's definitely something that I wasn't expecting to see him go to Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. Like I was kind of thinking maybe you see – like I know there was a lot of talk about um, a couple different quarterbacks going to Atlanta, but, I mean – now, obviously, we see Russell Wilson up in the AFC division. Then this is definitely going to be a curveball for Russell Wilson. It's well, going to be a good learning curve. I so, think. so now we've got you know, like I guess Atlanta's taken. Yeah. Um, we'll talk about that in a second. But we've got the Vikings are open. Uh, did the Raiders just sign a guy? I feel like they just signed somebody, anything. but I can't remember who. But there's been so many different. That could have been. Yeah, there were so many, and I, I didn't write that one down. It, Obviously, wasn't big enough for me yeah. to to think it was worth mentioning, but there's literally been so many we've trying lost to track. think of trying to think of who else might need a QB right now, and it's nar- it's narrowing down. Uh, yeah. It really is because you, you think of of teams like the Bears, Commanders, Patriots the now, and then, and then the Steelers. Yeah, I mean you've you've got teams that are looking towards the draft. That it seems very clear mm-hmm. that they're going for the draft to yeah, be able to get somewhere. Absolutely. So. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, if if he does go over to the Steelers, I do think this is a decent fit. I'm just not ready to give up on Kenny Pickett yet, personally. Yeah. Uh, I I think, I think Kenny, is good. Uh, I I just I, I'm I'm not sure. I guess I haven't seen a whole lot of the Steelers to really make a great assessment on him. But I'm I'm not ready to give up on him just yet. I'd rather go with Kenny Pickett than Mason Rudolph. That's for sure. Oh, yeah, 100. percent I mean, I. I w- after all the hullabaloo that you see Mason Rudolph go through after getting hit in the head, I mean, <laughs> I would definitely go with Kenny Pickett. Uh, he's just... he's a puke. I yeah, can't, can't stand nice. Mason Rudolph at all. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I- exciting. I'm, I'm glad that Russell can still stay in the league just because yeah. Russell Wilson is, is one of those big-time QBs. Uh, but, obviously, they're going to get him for a really good, really good price yeah. because he has not shown up, and he is not worth a big price tag right now. And he's done that to himself. But going over one of the moves that was probably the biggest, one of the biggest shocks to me, maybe not a shock completely that this team would have gone after a guy like him, but one that definitely changes what you think of the outcome of where this team could be because this is just one small piece that they've, that they've, they've made. It's the Eagles signing running back Saquon Barkley to a three-year deal worth 37 point. Seven five million dollars. This is a huge deal for Saquon, and it was a huge signing for the Eagles. I'm, I'm looking at this one. This might have been one of, if not the best. I think I'm going to tie it for the for the best. I'm going I'm to put it up there and tied for number one right now. Uh, and I'll get to the other one that that I think would tie with it. But for now, this one ties for number one for the best signing in the free agency market right now. Saquon Barkley to the Eagles. First of all, if you're the Giants, you let go of him to anywhere, anywhere. <laughs> but a division rival. Anywhere but a division rival. And you let him go there. Uh, I mean, yeah. just the Giants look like they are falling apart. Now you lose Saquon, and he goes to the Eagles. This is this is awesome. I love this move yeah. so much. The Giants have been falling apart, and we've seen that. But They have for quite some time. The one thing I just want to point out, I know with Jason Kelsey retiring, somebody's always got to fill that void. But no, obviously I'm not going to say Saquon being a center. But just think about this. 
with how strong Saquon Barkley is, just think is, how just think how much more lethal that tush push in Philly is gonna be now. Thighs as big as like my, my shoulder, head. my shoulder width. Yeah, <laughs> just, like yeah, your head. Yeah, my for, shoulder width, your head. I mean, about the same. <laughs> just look at my head, then think of Saquon Barkley's calves. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty. Accurate. That yeah, hit, your head would be his calves. My shoulders would be his thighs. Yeah, that's. I that's mean, the dude, that pretty good. Yeah, the, the tush push is not going away just because no. Jason Kelsey's gone. Because this is a new you, era. You may not have the center to be able to to push, push the way, yeah. ma- make a way. But you're still going to have a good line. We're not questioning how good their offensive line is going to be. Now you have Saquon Barkley pushing you from behind. All worries out the window. The Eagles. Uh, so I saw something where the Eagles went from, what was it, um, plus 2,300 to plus 1,800? Something. Really? It was something crazy for, wow. for, for the odds to win the Super Bowl after making this signing. Yeah. It was a huge jump, and, wow. and I, I might be wrong on that. I'll see if I can look it up and yeah. find it because uh, I, I can't remember. If, I can't remember if I if I saved it. Yeah, but I mean, realistically, thinking about it here for Saquon Barkley, I know Josh did this the last time we talked about Saquon Barkley. So since he didn't do it, I'm gonna do it. Saquon is back, and there's a new era for the Saquon Barkley era. But Saquon Barkley, we've obviously seen what he's done. The only big, big thing that everyone knows about for Saquon Barkley and Josh, you know as much as I have, is injuries. Yeah. That's the big, big thing for Saquon Barkley. And just, you may have monster calves. And but, you may have, but you're not the guy anymore. That is true. You're not the guy. You're not the true. guy, which is an amazing thing if you're Saquon. And I guarantee that's why he wanted to sign with the Eagles. So he didn't get hurt. Because you are not the guy that we are relying on. Yeah. You are one of the guys that we're yeah. relying on. And that's an amazing thing for him because now we don't have to give you the ball 45 times a game for us to be able to have a chance to yeah. win. You have guys like A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith, uh, and then you, you have Jalen Hurts, and then now you're adding him. I, and I know I'm, I'm forgetting guys. Is, is Watkins? Walken, yeah, uh, yeah, Watkins. Yeah, Watkins is so, so Watkins is still there too. So, I mean, yeah, you've, you've got dudes around you. Mm-hmm. So you're, you don't have to be the guy, and, and that's an amazing thing. Who's their tight end right now, the Eagles? Um, I, know, I, I know I can see his face too, Goddard. Yeah, Dallas Goddard. Dallas Goddard. So yeah, so yeah, you are not you are not the guy anymore. Nope. That's an amazing. So you know what? That's an amazing thing for him. So you know what? I'm with you. Saquon's back. No, 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 no. Saquon is back. There we go. We we need to figure out like a way to get it like <laughs> the zoom like kind of like yeah, just something crazy. <laughs> yeah. But no, I just I, I love this move so much for Saquon and for the Eagles. Congrats, guys. Uh, this was the best signing. So far on our list, mm-hmm. other than Baker Mayfield, like signed with the Bucks, of course. No, that's that no, up. that's that's total bias. But let's jump on because, like I said, the Vikings now looking for a new QB because Kirk Cousins agrees to a four-year deal worth 180 Say million dollars with the Atlanta Falcons. If I am not mistaken, and if the number that I looked up is correct, he is making the same per year as Patrick Mahomes. You're kidding. If I am not mistaken, by the number that I looked up for Patrick Mahomes, now Patrick Mahomes' what? deal is like a 10-year deal uh, worth $450 million, if I remember correctly. Yeah. So he is making the same per year as Patrick Mahomes. Wow. If I'm correct on that, that is stupid. Wow. I think I think Baker Mayfield was a bit overpaid, and, and that's coming from a diehard Baker Mayfield fan. A bit overpaid because – Man, a hundred and what was what did I say? One hundred and fifty up up to one hundred and fifteen with the bonuses, yeah. if I remember right. I think he had a hundred million uh, dollar contract, one hundred eighty million contract. So, well, uh, ba- Baker, yeah, ba- yeah, yeah, Baker had a yeah, hundred million yeah. dollar contract. So now with Kirk Cousins, you know, so I I think Baker is a bit overpaid. Kirk Cousins, man, like he is a good quarterback. He is a quarterback that will win you games. He knows what he's doing on the field. He's also a veteran who can teach a young quarterback if you bring a young quarterback in. You've still got Ritter, uh, and so with Ritter still there, maybe he can help produce uh, you know, produce something out of Ritter. Uh, what's what's his first name, Ritter? Um, Desmond Ritter. Desmond Ritter, yeah. I don't, I don't know why I was uh, drawing a blank on his first name. But, yeah, so, I mean, with, with Desmond still there, go for it, man. Like, you you, you – You've got Kirk Cousins. I think that's a great ad. I like Kirk Cousins to Atlanta. I do. Yeah. And I, th- I think this is going to be good. Um, because if I'm being honest, I say Kirk Cousins, then Baker, then D- 
Derek Carr, then Bryce Young. Bryce Young could easily flip above Derek Carr because I think he's got the potential. Yeah, he's got. But the potential. right now in that division, that's how I would rank him. If I'm talking about current success and current ability and ceiling, I would go Baker, then Kurt, uh, and then Derek and Bryce. Really kind of tied for third, but I'll put Derek above him because I think he's just more of accomplished yeah. uh, an, an accomplished quarterback in the league right now because Bryce just didn't have a good rookie year, but. This adds to the that that what is that the NFC, NFC South. Yeah, so uh, I mean, it, it adds to the quarterbacks down there. I do like Kirk Cousins. I just think he's overpaid. He he is finding a way, time and time again, to steal, rob these teams, and it needs to stop somewhere. My thing is, you talk about Kirk Cousins here. He's a he's a good quarterback, but the one thing I always tell there was an old friend of mine. Her name was Megan. And we would always talk, going to work, and we talk about how the NFL week went on Sundays, going into Monday. The one thing we would always love to roast about is this guy named Kirk Cousins. I mean, the one thing that always gets me is you see Kirk Cousins dropping back for a pass, right? Now, whenever they show a replay, just because obviously in live speed you can't see it, but whenever Kirk Cousins Gary up throw that ball, have you seen his face? He literally looks petrified to throw the ball. He's like, eh. <laughs> I'm like, I would be too if I was Kirk Cousins. But, like, Kirk Cousins, you need to have confidence in yourself. I, I don't think he lacks confidence. I think <laughs> you're making fun of his facial I mean, expressions, which are very goofy. But yeah. he's just a goofy dude. Yeah, he's a goofy dude. He is. Have you seen him on the plane? Just, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, dude, he get brings, out of here. He brings that energy, though. And I think dude. I think his teammates like being around him. Yeah. I really do. Uh, and, 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 you know, I've, he's I, I have heard. He's too, for he is, he is. I don't know his age. I'm going to look it up. He's He's got to be in his, like, I think his mid thir- like late 30s. Is this what I was thinking? 35. Yeah, I was just so right mid to late 30s. Yeah. Right there, dead on in the middle. Yeah. Like, and he is the same age as Russell Russell Wilson, only a year younger than Matthew Stafford. Really? I, did, I, I thought Matthew Stafford oh. was a little older, and I thought Russell Wilson was just barely younger than Matthew Stafford. Hmm. And so, I thought Kirk yeah. Cousins was a little older. Mm-hmm. But really, like, I, yeah, I, th- I thought he was a little younger, like man. just barely younger. But I thought I thought Matthew Stafford was like pushing 40. Yeah. And then Russell Wilson was right there behind him, and then Kirk was right behind him. True. Huh. I don't know. I, I, yeah, I mean, I'm looking looking at it. No, I, I guess it's right because Aaron Rodgers is 40. Yeah. So it's, it's just all that popped up whenever I searched for his age. But, yeah, yeah I, I, I think this is a good move for Atlanta. You just got robbed. Yeah. But that's, that's all I can say about it. Yeah. But – Going over because, like we said, we, like we mentioned, Saquon to the Eagles. That means where is the Eagles running back? Where is DeAndre Swift going to be? Because they added DeAndre Swift, he was an amazing addition for them. Uh, I absolutely loved that that addition, and he did such an amazing job for them last season. But now we see DeAndre Swift signing with the Bears to a three-year deal worth twenty-four and a half million dollars, securing the bag. Uh, some 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 good chatter being thrown at a very good running back, a guy that can really help over there. After seeing some of these contracts and seeing what's going into them, it's very obvious that quarterbacks are just overpaid. They really are. Kirk Cousins securing that that, that kind of a bag. Uh, Baker Mayfield securing that kind of a bag. Man, I, I would I would almost say that DeAndre Swift as a running back is about at the same tier as Baker Mayfield as a quarterback. And the pay differential is so much different. I understand the quarterback's going to get paid more than the running back. Mm-hmm. But I feel like the the quarterback should be bumped down a little. Not necessarily the running back being bumped up, because I think a three-year, three, three year, uh, $24.5 million deal, deal is a really good deal. But I don't know. I'm just I'm just looking at all of these running back deals compared to it. There, there definitely needs to be an adjustment to the salary caps for each position. I yeah. just I, I don't understand how you can – afford to pay quarterbacks this much anymore to, to get a good quarterback you have to spend a lot of money and it's just becoming a little too competitive but anyways i just want to i kind of went on a rant there deandre swift to the bears i like this move a lot uh, i think the bears needed another guy to come in that so i mean if, if they keep david montgomery i haven't seen anything on him if they keep him as kind of a more of a power back mm-hmm. now you add deandre swift who is just a squirrely Straight, dude squirrely, just yeah. Super fast can get on the outsides yeah. and and do what he needs to do. I think this is a really good running back duo to help whoever it is that ends up being the quarterback there in Chicago. Absolutely. I mean, like you said, 
we're used to seeing just Montgomery just trying to do whatever he can for the for the Chicago Bears' running core. But adding a key piece like this is going to be huge for the Chicago Bears. And I mean, everyone who is a Bears fan, thankfully I'm not one, but um, – Everyone knows for Chicago, every year it's going to be a hit or miss situation. Now, adding key pieces like this and obviously having the upcoming draft, I think this is going to be a turnaround year for the Chicago Bears, in my opinion. I mean, looking at them getting the pick, then getting Caleb Williams, or as we say, but I mean, most likely. Yeah, most likely, but That's, anything's that possible. That seems like the very obvious yeah. direction to go yeah. at this point. You would think, but I mean,. Anything's possible in the NFL. But they've also screwed up their their organization (laughs) plenty in the past. That's what I'm trying to say. Like the Chicago Bears, they can they can definitely this could be their their breakthrough season, in my opinion, having key weapons and adding big offensive guys and not offensive line, but great quarterbacks. And I mean for getting this kind of momentum going in the beginning of the year and just trying to get everybody in the right page, it's definitely gonna be a good thing for the Chicago Bears. And I know every one of them is just so scared before this before those transactions and everything on on Sunday. Everyone that is a Chicago Bears fan is always scared to just turn on the TV just because it's definitely going to be either we're going to be up by 21, then the other team's going to come back and win, or we're going to be down a whole bunch and maybe get two touchdowns and say we got close. But looking at the Chicago Bears, I think this is definitely going to be a good – Good momentum turn for the Chicago Bears, but if I didn't say this, I would probably be be disappointed in my one friend Charity. Charity, not Bears. So, <laughs> I mean, it's definitely going to be a – I think it will be a good year for the Chicago Bears, but if I had to say for myself. Yeah, yeah, man, I, I think they're going to look better going into the future. I think they've definitely started to make some better Headlight. decisions. Yeah. Uh, you got Maybe not necessarily the, the right moves every time. But, yeah, you, you've, you've got to add some guys back there. And add, adding DeAndre Swift is not a bad addition at all. No. So, especially if you can keep at some sort of one-two punch with him and Definitely. a guy like David Montgomery. So, like I said, I'm not sure. I haven't heard anything on him. No. But he, he might not be there from, for all I know. I keep thinking Montgomery from, like, I know he's with Chicago, but every time I see Detroit, I think of that Montgomery. I'm like, wait a minute, I thought he was Chicago. But, like, oh, wait a minute. No, this is a completely different person. But, I mean. Yeah, you're thinking uh, – Oh yeah, you know what? Maybe maybe David Montgomery did go over to, to Detroit. Detroit. I think you're right. Is it? Who, who does Detroit have? I don't. I don't even remember. Anymore. I don't know. But yeah, so I guess I guess I'm not really sure. Maybe maybe this is just a good good way to get a good back in there. Because yeah, you you were you were right. I think David Montgomery did go over yeah. to the Lions. So I've so, seen highlights and it yeah, says so, Montgomery. So yeah, so so yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think of who they just had this last season, and now I'm drawing a blank. But. Yeah. That's just how much this free agency has kind of got me all yeah. out of whack. I'm, I'm going to have to study this even harder when it comes closer to the NFL yeah. season so I don't sound like a complete buffoon Full. trying yeah. to figure out you know who I'm going to pick and yeah. who I'm not going to pick for some of these games. But mm-hmm. let's jump over to another NFC North team, and that is the Packers. They are expected at this time. They haven't done it yet, yet as of right now, um, but they are expected to sign Josh Jacobs as a running back from the Raiders. And they're going to release Aaron Jones. I hate to see Aaron Jones go. I think he is one of those underrated guys. I think he is a great running back. I love watching him run the ball. Uh, he has had some injury issues, so we'll see where he ends up. I don't know. I'm, I'm looking around. Hey, maybe he goes over to the Bears uh, and helps the Bears out with that one-two punch I was talking about with DeAndre Swift. I don't know. But Josh Jacobs going over to the Packers. An amazing addition. Uh, I, I don't blame you one bit for trying to clear some sort of space for a guy like him. This is a really good move, and and, and I like this. I like I like uh, Josh Jacobs going there. I'm just sad for Aaron Jones uh, having to having to be pushed out the door. Yeah, it's definitely kind of sad to see Aaron Jones get pushed out the door, but it is David Montgomery that is with Detroit. But that's yeah. on a different note. But I mean, this is definitely going to be a thing that where you're going to be talking about getting just something for a running back for. Um, uh, for the Green Bay Packers. But, I mean, we've obviously seen Green Bay. We're all just used to, at least I can say I am. I'm still used to the thing quarterback-wise for Aaron Rodgers back in that backfield. But, I mean, this is definitely a, a whole new love situation. But, I mean, for a running back situation, they definitely got to find something just because if they don't, it's going to be a hard season for the Green Bay Packers. And, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's it's – it seems like it's been a rough season for the Green Bay Packers since losing Aaron Rodgers. But, I mean, for their running situation, it, they they really relied a lot on their running game. So, 
I, I do think they started to see a lot of plus side yeah. to Jordan Love towards the end of the season, they which did. is great for them. <coughs> so so I, I definitely think they're on a they're very on good path. I think Jordan Love, you give him a couple more seasons, mm-hmm. it's just hard knowing for sure because he doesn't have somebody to help him yeah. progress other than coaches. So what are the coaches going to do? How is that coaching staff going to help him succeed? So – uh, by the way, it was Khalil Herbert this last year. I had to look it up because it was bugging me. Uh, Khalil Herbert was the was the Bears oh, running back. So I don't know why I was I was still still imagining uh, David, David Montgomery's and 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 that and that Chicago uh, jersey. Yeah. But going over, we've got the ex Chargers running back Austin Eckler. Now it looks like he's moving out of uh, I guess what is it the Los Angeles Chargers. So uh, you know he's moving out of Los Angeles, going over. And signing possibly with the Commanders, you're gonna have to crank that down pretty tight. Cause yeah, I know. <laughs> but anyways, he he him, it looks like he's gonna be signing a two year deal, uh, and and I believe this is not official as I'm saying this. So this is one of those that may change. But it's he's signing with the Commanders to a two year deal up uh, up to the worth of eleven point four three million dollars. So an, another really big signing. Uh, you, you see Austin, a guy like Austin Eckler hit the market and and, and be out there looking for another place to sign I, I think this is this is definitely a guy that if you're a team you you have to look look into getting him uh, Austin Eckler going over to the the commanders how do you like this move I think this is definitely a big key thing that you have to get I mean for for what the commanders have definitely done this season just alone they've turned a lot of heads for just being in their league or just in their conference in general but I mean the Washington commanders that's that's another team that you can just see either have a pretty good season, or you can just see them be completely mediocre. I mean, you look at what they've done, obviously, for this last up season. They they proved a lot of people wrong, and they shocked a lot of people. But for this upcoming year, and obviously now adding another key piece for their for their association, it's definitely going to be it's definitely going to be one of those things to where you might want to take another look at the Washington Commanders and think twice about the team in general just because you can look at them in the past and you can say, oh, it's just the commanders. We can easily cakewalk over these guys. But, Josh, I mean, you look at these this team now, and this this could definitely bring some new life for the commanders, in my opinion. Well, adding Cliff Kingsbury yeah, and then, you know, bringing him in as a, as a coach to help with the offense. And then you're talking about possibly getting either Caleb Williams or Drake May or mm-hmm. who knows, maybe even Jaden Daniels if that's the route that they go with. And didn't they get rid of Ron and, Rivera? Whoever, yes, yeah, so they got rid of him. I forget yeah. what the coach was that they, they they hired, but you know, with with everything that they're doing to <clears throat> try to change face, I don't think they're going to be better on year one. But right. they're definitely on the right time. track of doing some good things. You definitely upgraded with Austin Eckler from Brian Robinson. Yeah, I think that's a definitely. really good upgrade. So seeing everything that they're doing, I do think they're going to be one of these teams that eventually works their way back in. And who knows, maybe they make the right decision too and name them, name themselves the Redskins again. Um, but you know that's that's the that, that's the next move if you want to make the right moves. Mm-hmm. But going over, like you mentioned, Joe Mixon leaves Cincinnati, goes to Houston. Uh, now this was a trade. What was kind of weird about this whole situation uh, is that we saw Joe Mixon. He took a pay cut to be able to stay with the Bengals last year. The Bengals were ready to cut him. Uh, he just got himself himself in too much trouble. Uh, they were ready to cut him. He took a pay cut to stay with the Bengals. They were going to release him, but instead went another route, found a trade, and I didn't see any details on this trade. I don't know if it was official at the time that we're speaking right now. So uh, the Houston Texans now pick up Joe Mixon. I don't think he's a bad bad running back at all. I think he's a good running back. Uh, he he's he's had some great seasons. He's had some injuries here and there that kept him out, but he he is he's he can be a very good running back in the right system. Uh, and so when you think of the Texans and what they needed. The running back position was probably the biggest uh, question mark of where they could go when it came to the Texans. And so I think picking up a guy like Joe Mixon, if you can keep him out of trouble, uh, maybe make sure to keep him away from massage parlors so he doesn't fall into the same uh, category as Deshaun Watson. But outside of that, you know, keep him out of trouble. I think Joe Mixon was a very good ad for them on the field, and hopefully it, it, it proves well for him. I know it's, it sucks to see him leave the Bengals as a Bengals fan, but I do think you guys, uh, so you, you added – uh, Moss, Moss. Uh, yeah. you know what was his first name? Uh, um, Zachary Moss. Did I get yeah, that? I think it might so, be so Moss, you get you get <clears throat> Moss in as a running back. I don't know if that is much of an upgrade, it's but I do have void. I do have a lot of faith in uh, the the young guy that came out of Illinois that you guys had as a rookie last year Ooh, for a running back. Is it no um, not Chase Chase? Uh, 
I don't know why I'm drawing a blank on his, but yeah, I mean, anyways, I I, I do think that the the I, I think Cincinnati is going to be okay without Joe Mix, and I think they're going to find uh, find a way to to succeed without him. And, yeah. and of course, I think T Higgins was the bigger news leaving than than it would have been for Joe Mixon. So I I don't think Joe Mixon was a game changer the way that a guy like maybe. Uh, T Higgins was mm-hmm. just the way that he could step in in key moments yeah. and do something big for the for the team. Yeah, but I mean Joe Joe Mixon going on to, to Houston though, I do think that that's a really good ad. Joe Mixon going to the Houston Texans is definitely going to be a good boost for the Texans. Um, but before I get into that, obviously Joe Bur- I mean Joe Burrow, Joe Mixon, we loved you in Cincinnati. Then obviously you brought a lot of game to a lot of good th- good vibes to Cincinnati, and it was always fun to watch you. But I mean. I can go on and on about Joe, but um, my big my big concern is just keep the right Joe Joe Burrow healthy. But yeah. that's on a different note. But for Joe Mixon going to the Texans is definitely going to be a good thing for their running core. Joe Mixon has definitely brought a lot of game changing moments for the Cincinnati Bengals here in this last season. He's definitely not afraid to put his foot in the ground and make a good cut, and then he's going to break outside. But I mean, Joe Mixon is definitely another one of those guys to where he can just pack a punch right up the gut, and if you get a good block. Joe Mixon's going to find a hole, and he's going to shoot for it, and he's going to bring plus yardage just for you guys. But it's definitely bittersweet, but this is a good pickup for um, for the Houston Texans, and um, no, I wish nothing but the best for Joe Mixon just to stay healthy and have a good, successful season. But if we ever cross paths again, I'm sorry, buddy. I'm still going to I'm still gonna cheer for the Bengals at the end of the day. But it's definitely, definitely different to see that um, – Joe Mixon not in the backfield for Cincinnati. And the, like I was telling you before we went live, then I just bought a Joe Mixon jersey this up uh, this last season and now he's gone. So but it is what it is. But Joe Mixon, like I said, wishing nothing but the best down in Houston. But it's definitely gonna be a good a good running addition to the Houston Texans Josh. Yeah, yeah, I think that's exactly what they needed. A good they veteran did. running back who yeah. can help you in, in that run game. And so uh, I don't. I don't think he's like the biggest game changer consistently. Yeah. But he's definitely he's got his had moments. statistically he's had his seasons. Yeah. And so he can definitely be a very good he's running back. Moments. And maybe maybe they have got the right system for him too. Yeah. Because he's he's obviously got the talent. Look mm-hmm. back even at his days back at at Oklahoma. Uh, and so he's obviously got the the talent. And and he's been good enough to be a starting running back mm-hmm. in the NFL since his Day first one. year. So. Yeah. Just yeah, I think this is a really good addition for them. Mm-hmm. Chase Brown, by the way, that was that was the running back that I was go. thinking. Of. Okay. I kept on wanting to say Chase Young, and I knew that wasn't right um, because Chase Young out there exactly. in San Fran, yeah. so <laughs> he's a defensive head. Yeah. So uh, yeah, just looking at looking at Joe Mixon, really good ad for the for the uh, the Texans. Texans, and then I do think the Bengals will be just fine without him. Yeah. But we were talking about the quarterbacks up there in the AFC North, some of the competition kind of getting a little closer. You talk about the AFC North uh, quarterbacks right now because you've got Joe Burrow, you've got Lamar Jackson, now possibly adding in to that that mix, Russell Wilson. And, of course, you've got Deshaun Watson, but now a backup to Deshaun Watson, which could be very big for the Browns, uh, is Jameis Winston signing a one-year contract. Uh, so he's expected to be their backup quarterback behind Deshaun Watson. And it seems like the motivation for Jameis Winston trying to sign with the Browns he said was because he wants to win Super Bowls. Well, I'm sorry to break it to you, buddy. Uh, I, I love you. I think I think I'm I'm cheering for Jameis Winston his, and his success because I see how how hard he is working. I didn't like him in his college days. I had a really hard time coming around to liking him. But I I, I do. I'm cheering for you. I, I'm cheering for your your success. But you signed with the wrong team if you're looking for a Super Bowl. Uh, it's just not going to happen there. I, I don't see it happening anytime soon. At least not in my lifetime. So. You might have made the wrong pick there, but who knows? Maybe Jameis Winston was the guy that's going to come in there, steal the show, steal that starting position, and take him to the promised land. But, uh, you know, Jameis, just eat them Ws. What do you think of Jameis Winston going over there as backup quarterback at the Browns? Eat them Ws, that's pretty good. But, man, before I get into that. Got to rub some barbecue on them. Yeah, I was say, you can't forget the barbecue ranch. You can't forget the sauce, dude. <laughs> but before I get into that. There's only one Cincinnati team that's going to be good. Or not Cincinnati, Ohio team. And Cincinnati, so get that right, buddy. But, I mean, looking at for this addition for having a bag of quarterback, it's definitely a, it's something good to have. He's obviously seen plenty of play in the field, and he's definitely had his moments for when he was able to play. But, I mean, in this aspect, this is another thing to where is he even going to see the field. I mean – I think as bad as Deshaun Watson is, I'll say yes. Yeah, I get that. I, I'm not a fan of Deshaun. I don't think he's good anymore. 
he was good. Yeah. Uh, and not only that, I just I'm I'm gonna cheer against him for yeah. everything that he's done. In. So, I mean, if he does get in, which I I can see it being possible, and I think he'll I think he'll settle fine with them, but I just don't know exactly what the road is to thinking that you're going to be winning a Super Bowl in Cleveland. I mean, talent has never been the issue. Yeah. It's been it's coaching. coaching. It's been really revolving all around yeah. coaching for the most part cuz you've just got <coughs> game game schemes and, mm-hmm. and and the way that you're you're playing you're calling plays. Mm-hmm. It's just so many things in the coaching department that I think they need to fix there before yeah. trying to find talent to to fix the issue because it's yeah. not been a, a, an issue there for a long time. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, Jameis going there, uh, like I said, I'm cheering for you. I just don't think it's the right move for him. I think yeah. it's a good pickup for the Browns. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think that's what you needed. The right, yeah. M- maybe you shouldn't have gone for Deshaun Watson in the first place. That's where I think you went wrong because he wasn't the guy that was going to bring you to a promised land. No. Uh, in fact, Joe Flacco took you further than he did. So what yeah. is that saying? Didn't they sign him for an, a year, or is it still up in the I, I didn't see anything on Joe Flacco yet. I know he uh, talked so about one. I know to he come had. Back. I know he had a one year deal. I know he wants to come back. I don't yeah. know if he wants to come back for the Browns, uh, and who knows? Because now that they signed Jameis Winston, maybe they're just not interested. Yeah, there's possibility. So, but looking over at a team, another division rival for you, it the Ravens. This is the one that I said I would mention is tied for number one up there with Saquon to the Eagles. The Ravens picking up Derrick Henry. King Henry decides it's time to move on from the Titans. The Titans, uh, and I think a big part of this may have been them getting rid of Mike Vrabel, uh, a good coach, and you got rid of him. Uh, I didn't understand that move. We talked about that, but now you lose your franchise running back, the guy that he's not as unstoppable as he once was, but I also think he's not around the team that he once was. So... Seeing Derrick Henry go over to the Ravens, I think this was a huge move. I think this can be a very dangerous move for a team that got so close to a Super Bowl this past season to now go pick up a guy like Derrick Henry as a running back to pair him with a guy like Lamar Jackson in the backfield. Watch out for those zone reads. That's all I've got to tell you because now you've got Derrick Henry. You've got Lamar Jackson. You've got Mark Andrews. You've got... Uh, guys on the outside like Zay Flowers and who knows they're they're probably going to add more. They're going to want to add more. I don't know if they're if they're bringing back OBJ or not, but I think he was a very good addition and helped split uh, spread out the field a lot. So you, you're seeing guys like that. And then of course we saw uh, what was it Isaiah Likely? Isaiah Likely. Yep. He stepped in for for Mark Andrews. So now apparently they've got a backup tight end that's just about as good as any other tight end in the, in the league. So just looking at what they've got over there, and then of course their their defense. And I know for a fact uh, that uh, they have they signed somebody here recently on defense. They did lose a big piece on defense. Uh, and I guess I'll just, since we're talking about the Ravens, they, they lost Patrick Queen. He goes over to the Steelers. So, again, you're getting rid of an amazing player to a division rival. Uh, all of this news, man. I mean, just let's start off with Derrick Henry over to the Ravens. Are you scared yet? I already was. <laughs> and then this happens. We already have to deal with Derrick Henry when we play Tennessee. And now it just became a lot worse for us in Cincinnati. I mean, you talk about Derrick Henry and what he's been doing. We've obviously you can just Google or I Google YouTube Derrick Henry highlights and the list in the video will probably be at least an hour long for Derrick Henry. But adding that key piece for the Baltimore offense. It's already one thing to try and stop Lamar Jackson in Baltimore, but now you got to stop Derrick Henry in that aspect. Don't get me wrong. Cincinnati has had their moments in stopping Derrick Henry, but it's another thing when you talk about Lamar Jackson, but that's a different story. Derrick Henry is one of those type of running backs to where if he puts his foot in the ground, Josh, you might as well just either kneel down or just get out of the way. You, If you look at Derrick Henry's body stature, he literally looks like a straight-up semi-truck just coming at you in 12th gear. I don't want to try to tackle him. Oh, God, no. I wouldn't want to try and tackle him. I, try I do and, not want to try to I tackle him. I try and pull a Mario and throw a banana peel. That might stop him. For <laughs> throw all throw one of those red shells. That's going to get Yeah, him. I might do that, too. But, I mean, Derrick yeah, Henry, good guy. They God. signed him to a two-year, $16 million deal. Very good uh, deal for him. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think he could 
earn even more uh, yeah, if, if, he if he if he has a good year. He just hasn't had the the great years that we know he's capable of. Yeah. But now you're on a team where I think you're capable of doing that again. So mm-hmm. we'll see. I think this is going to be very scary. I think the yeah, Ravens are going to come there. Right now, the Eagles and the Ravens, with those two additions, mm-hmm. th- th- those are the two teams right now. I mean, yeah. you look over at the NFC, that is a scary co- conference as a whole. Yeah. Then you look at those two separate divisions, those two divisions. I mean, the Eagles, I feel like they've got their division. The Cowboys are the toughest right now and uh i gotta get past Stephen a smith they lost tony pollard and i didn't mark that down but tony pollard went somewhere so guys we missed a lot in the free agency there's so much there's so much to get to we're already running up on an hour on on this Mm -hmm. episode so i'll hurry up and throw this last one in there the ravens lose linebacker patrick queen to a three-year deal over there with the steelers worth 41 million dollars securing the bag Mm -hmm. patrick king over there with uh, sorry patrick queen I said Patrick King. <laughs> man, that, that is – Oh, man. He, sh- he should. He should yeah, change he should it. Patrick King. King. Uh, no, but Patrick Queen going over, being an addition to TJ Watt and and all the dudes that they've got over there. Think of Fetz Patrick. He signed with someone else. I'm going to look that up because that's another big one uh, that I want to make sure to, to bring up. But first, just starting off with, with Patrick Queen going over to the Steelers because they're, they're, they're known as a defensive team. Mm-hmm. Now they might be adding – Russell, Russell Wilson, Wilson, who who knows, we might get the old Russ, the vintage Russ, and number. now adding Patrick Queen into that linebacker core, just a scary team right now. As a Cincinnati Bengals fan, I was really looking forward to the upcoming year, but at this rate, it's going to be a really, really hard road for us if we want to make it to the postseason. You add a guy like Patrick Queen, he is a key piece on that defense. And like you've mentioned before, these linebackers, they are they can be the key piece of that defense. And I sincerely think this guy, he can definitely be a big key, key aspect for the Pittsburgh Steelers defense. And like Josh mentioned, then you look on the other side of the ball, having Russell Wilson. It's one thing to have one side of the ball be offense and one side of the ball be defense. Then they try and bounce off of each other. Have The defense have a good stand, have a good series. Then you want to see the offense do the exact same thing and try and bounce off of each other for having that momentum. But before adding all these key pe- these pieces, I shouldn't say key pieces, but just pieces right now because we haven't seen anything in the NFL. But I think it's safe to say this I is know, a key piece. With, with I the, by the way, I did look that up. Minka Fitzpatrick is still with the Steelers for, okay. let's see, it would be another, another two, two years. years. So that defense, <laughs> that defense. And then now you're talking about possibly at the very least adding a veteran quarterback that could help boost your your young quarterback's yeah. morale uh, help boost his his playing ability yeah uh, and and who knows what 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 could happen there with the Steelers and and not only that but maybe this whole Russell Wilson thing isn't the case and they end up going after a guy like Justin Fields who I think is a good quarterback yeah so I, I don't know I'm, I'm looking at the <coughs> possibilities for the Steelers another another team that I think is going to I, I think they may be one of the most the biggest improvements to mm-hmm. the year because they didn't have a good season last year no uh you look at, at Tomlinson, he was kind of on the hot seat for what he had this past season. Yeah. And so I think with some of the additions that we're seeing and where they could move and w- where they could improve and where they're looking to improve, the Steelers might be one of the, the most impressive yeah. teams coming out compared to what they did last year. And they didn't even have a bad season. No. They went uh, 500, Five, right? Yeah, they went a little above 500. See, they would have been 9-8. and eight. So, yeah. yeah, just above because everyone in the in – the, uh, AFC, AFC North yeah. was was above 500. Yeah, so that that's just crazy to look at the the AFC North right now because you you've got the Browns. I don't think they're going to go downward too much. They're not going to be as good. I don't think as last year. We'll see. Yeah, I could be wrong, but then I think the Ravens are going to look phenomenal. Uh, and then you've got the Bengals. I don't it's think be tough. I, don't, I don't think they're going to go down because they're going to they're going to get Joe Burrow back. You keep yeah. him healthy. You're going to definitely do better Joe than Burr, you did last Lamar, year, which um, you did. You, the Bengals did great last year for considering all of the mm-hmm. injuries that they had throughout the oh, entire man. season, especially being your starting quarterback. Yeah. Props to Jake uh, and, Browning, though. Yeah, yeah, he he, he had a very good year. Yeah, and so especially stepping into those shoes. Um, but then, of course, what team am I forgetting? The Steelers. Yeah. The so so now the Steelers great. doing what they're doing. So this is gonna this is gonna be a, a scary scary division overall. My division was already hard enough, and now it's just looking even harder and harder. But, Josh, I want to throw this out there. I know, obviously, we're seeing Baltimore at the top of that division. Do you think with what Pittsburgh's adding all in this in this wild 
free agency frenzy, do you think we could potentially see a new top team and switch the Pittsburgh Steelers from the Baltimore Ravens, or you think this is going to take some time? I don't know because right now, so comparing to last year, the most recent year that we had, you had the Ravens and then the Browns, mm-hmm. neck and neck, but the Ravens just above, but just above the Browns. Right. Right below that, you had the Bengals and the Steelers tied right there yeah. for last place. Just basically. take it for granted how much, like you said, how much injuries we. I faced. do think they could jump above the Browns. Both of those teams could jump above oh, the yeah, Browns easily. I, I think that could be a possibility. But I just don't know if anyone's going to be better than the Ravens this year. I don't think they're losing enough to make it, you know, scary for them because their defense was phenomenal last mm-hmm. year. And they had some young guys step in last year that that, true. that really helped out too. So that's true. Overall, I, I do think that that Ravens team is going to be very scary. Adding a guy like uh, Patrick Queen, Patrick King is what I'm going to start calling him now, <laughs> the king, because he is the king of of all linebackers. In that division right now, I mean, mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm trying to think of the the linebackers in that division. He might be one of yeah. one of, if not the He'll best. Be up there. So just scary looking team, uh, scary looking division. I mean, all over right now, teams are just making the right moves. I want to hear mm-hmm. from you. What was the biggest move? What was the worst move? And uh, you know, let, let me know because we want to hear from you guys down in the comments. You can also follow us on social media. You can follow us on on X, formerly known as Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all of that fun stuff. We want to hear from you guys. We so go remember. give us some love. Uh, and then, of course, if you're watching on YouTube, we thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Uh, we thank you all so much. And then, of course, you can also join the channel and help support us. We want to do more for our members, like things like behind the scenes. And we want to do extra content, some some exclusive live shows. There's going to be all kinds of stuff. So go check that out uh, and become a member today. You can help support us directly. So we thank you very much for those who are members so far. Uh, and then, of course, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcasts, you can give us a five-star review. That's the best way to help us over on those platforms. We thank you all so much for all of the love, all of the sport. We'll catch you next time.